Today, I wanna to walk you through a recent client project that I just finished up using Webflow CMS features to build a site that organizes, manages, and sells heavy farm equipment. Let's get started. What's going on guys, this is Peyton Smith and welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn how to grow your freelance web design business, or just get better at Webflow, make sure to click below to subscribe. So this week I'm launching a client website that I just recently finished up and I thought it was a great opportunity to dive in and show you guys exactly how I use Webflow CMS features to build a site that I'm able to charge a lot more for, but also that's gonna save me a lot of time and hassle and my client a lot of time and hassle. This is an awesome feature that's a total game changer for any web designers wanting to increase the caliber of your work and also charge more for the work that you're doing. So let's jump into it. Now, so you have a better idea of who my client is. This is a national company and what they do is they buy and sell used farm equipment, okay? So this farm equipment that they're selling sells for a lot of money. So it's a very high profit and high margins business. Um, each individual piece of equipment that they do sell, they're making a lot of money. And so the, the issue that they were running into is their current website was outdated and it really was just holding them back from selling as, as many pieces of equipment as they could. Um, their other big concern was the way that they had built their, their previous website. It took about two to three weeks for their web designer to update product images or to add or remove um, any equipment that had been sold or, or had changes, right? And so this was really, really frustrating for them because as they would sell a piece of equipment one week, they'd be getting calls for the next two or three weeks on that same piece of equipment even though it had already sold. And so it was wasting a lot of their time. Their website was just getting really messy and, and really there's no way for people to tell what pieces were for sale or which had been sold or which ones they still had available. Um, and so it was just a big fat mess for them, honestly. And at, at the end of the day, it was just losing customers for them. Um, they were really frustrated that they weren't able to make changes or, or notes or kind of track um, the pieces of equipment. And so overall, it was, you know, it just wasn't getting the job done. And so this was actually a client that reached out to me as a referral. And really the big question that I had asked them was, if we build you a new website and if this site generates even one extra sell for you, what is that worth to you? And the fact of the matter was a, a single additional sell is anywhere from ten to $50,000 or more, right? And so this question really helped them realize the value that a new website could bring. And really that was my, my main driving factors. We're going to save you time and we're going to sell more equipment because this website is going to be a lot cleaner. It's going to um, look a lot more trustworthy. It's going to be easier for you to manage. And so when you go into a call uh, with somebody that inquired about a piece on your website, you're going to know exactly who they are, what they need. You're going to be able to look up the past notes on that equipment. Um, and really, I was just going to be able to provide this full experience that was going to make life much, much easier on them. So I've got their website pulled up here in Webflow, and what I want to do is kind of show you the functionality um, behind the website, and then we're going to dive into exactly what I did to build this and how you can build something like this and, and what you're going to be able to really charge for this type of website. Because obviously with this type of structure, you're building um, a lot more value than just a web design. And that's one of my favorite things about Webflow CMS is it allows us as web designers to build systems of, of organization that make life much, much easier for the client. And this is worth a lot more than just a simple design because you're saving them time, you're saving them hassle, and you're making um, the entire process of, of owning and updating a website kind of fun and enjoyable for them, which is something most businesses aren't used to. And so what I've got here right off the bat is our equipment page where they are able to filter through all the different pieces of equipment on this site based on what category it falls under. And so this was one thing that we had to deal with right off the bat was the fact that there is over 20 different categories and we knew that there was going to be a lot of different pieces of equipment and so that organization was key. We need to make sure it was super clean and so you can see here as I click through these tabs um, it's going to filter through the different types of equipment for each individual category, right? And so what's going to happen, um, if I pull up an example here, 
of a specific piece of equipment. I'm going to click on this and it is going to take me directly to the um, page for that piece of equipment. What they're going to have here is a main um, equipment photo and then they're going to have like a little slideshow here that they're going to be able to click on and filter through these pictures. Um, I want to make sure that it was really clean and simple and so um, they're able to kind of scroll through these images and we'll talk about how to do that. But as you scroll down, you've got just a couple different tabs that are going to lay out everything that they need to know about this equipment. So we've got our overview, we've got our specs, and we've got our video, right? And the video is optional. It's not something that every piece of equipment has, but we want to make sure that the, the website had the capabilities to add any additional info that came with this piece of equipment. Um, over here on the side, when somebody wants to um, contact us about this specific piece of equipment. We wanted a way to kind of differentiate between each piece and so when somebody wanted to fill out a form and we received that form we would know hey they are inquiring specifically about the Cavernaland model 3200 cup planter right so a, a big long name is so what we've done is just created a temporary stock number and what they can do on this form is they can fill out their name they can fill out their phone number and then they can plug in that equipment stock number and they've got everything they need to submit and then our salespeople are going to receive that form submission they're going to be able to pull up this specific piece of equipment in the dashboard in the CMS dashboard in the editor and they're going to be able to have all the information right there as they go into this call okay the last thing that I want to point out and talk about and this was something that was really important to the overall flow and experience of shopping on our website and that is, is when somebody pulled up a piece of equipment that fell under the category of planter, we wanted at the bottom for them to see other um, pieces of equipment that were in that same category or that were related. Um, this is something that we see on a lot of different like, e-commerce websites. And so we want to make sure that if this is something they're specifically looking for, it doesn't make sense to offer other types of equipment that may not be relevant for them at all. And so you'll see as we click through these, Again, it's taken us to those individual um, equipment pages, and again, it's going to continue to offer up these related other pieces of equipment that we can navigate to really, really quickly. And so overall, this is a really simple website. It's a simple design, and it's a simple way to lay things out. But as we get kind of under the hood, you're going to realize that there's a lot more that goes into it um, when we're building out the CMS. And so as I pull open my CMS dashboard, there are two primary things that we have to focus on. Obviously our listings, which are each individual piece of equipment, but more importantly is our categories. And this is our organizational structure, right? And so what we've got here in our, in our CMS um, categories collection is all we're asking for is a name, a slug, which is required, and then a description, which is optional. And this is just a way for the employees at our company to be able to manage or, or have additional information that they might need to know about that category. Uh, and, and so what you're going to see here is I've created a category for each individual um, type. And again, these are things that can be added to or can be removed. But as you click into these, you'll see that we just use the name, made the slug, again, the description is optional. And then just with that, we've got all the categories that we need. As I click over here to the listings, you're going to see that this is a lot more complex the way that we've set this up because there's a lot of information that goes into each individual listing. There is information that's going to be public and visible on the website, but I also wanted to put a couple inputs that the employees here at the Spud Equipment Company could use to track different things. For example, we've got delivery and pickup notes, okay? And this says, in the help text, this is um, for SPUD equipment employee eyes only. It will not be visible to customers. And so what I've done is I have made this um, specific field right here, but we haven't connected it visually to the website. And so again, when they get into the dashboard, they're going to be able to look at all these different fields. But again, the ones that they don't want visible, we just didn't connect them to the, the live website. Okay. So you can see here we've got our name and slug. We've got a stock number which is going to be visible and that's just something that we make that correlates with the name of the equipment. Um, price, location, pickup notes, um, consignee notes, VIN, these are all things that are going to be kept private. Okay. Now as we scroll down, you'll notice that we've got these toggles that say is this equipment for sale or is this equipment sold. And I'm going to show you how as they toggle these in their dashboard, 
it is going to help them manage and it's actually going to put a title at the top of each listing that says either sold or for sale. This is going to make it a lot easier for them to manage this on their own and the second they sell a piece of equipment, boom, they can just click that little toggle and it's going to say that it's marked as sold or they can just erase it completely off the website. Okay, So we've got our overview, um, we've got our specs, our main image. The only other one that I want to really touch on was this images field and this is actually where they can upload like a whole group of images and these will show up on that right side where they can scroll through those images. Uh, these are all fields that are going to be necessary. Finally, we've got equipment categories. Now this is where we are going to connect our categories with our listings in the CMS, okay? And so what I've done here is um, I've added just like a reference, a multi-reference, and then I've um, selected categories. Now what this means is they can select um, one or more different categories that apply. So for example, maybe we've got a tractor that also does, you know, has planting features. They can put tractors and planters. They can use two different categories. So it's going to show up under both of those as they're filtering through all of the different equipment. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to hop out here and go into a specific listing and show you what this looks like on my end. They've got all of the fields right here. Again, you've got your toggles. You've got all the information. They can upload all their images. Equipment categories, you can select multiple here. We've also got a category that is called featured equipment. And so there are a lot of different pieces that will want to be featured as well as fall under their own personal category. So this makes it very, very easy, okay? We are going to hop into the editor, okay? Now this editor is going to show us what things are going to look like on the client side. Now this is very, very important, okay? So the editor, again, it's got this dashboard right here at the bottom. And as we pull this up, they are going to be able to manage their listings and their categories. They'll be able to open the listing and let's say that we want to create a new listing or in other words, add a new piece of equipment. They're going to be able to add everything in here. Again, they've got the notifications when it says that this is for employees only. They're going to be able to add the VIN number. They're going to put that this is for sale. Um, they're going to be, uh, be able to upload all of their images, a video URL to YouTube or Vimeo if that's available, and then they're going to select their categories. So they've got this drop down here where they can click that maybe it's an, an ebb and flow, and it also is a featured equipment. They click create and that is automatically going to integrate that into the website, okay? Now, we already have the basic idea of how Webflow CMS works and you've seen just a brief example here of how I'm using this, but really the important part that we want to be able to discuss is how did I get this set up, right? Now, I want to keep this brief. Obviously, there are a lot of things that you're going to have to dive in on your own to see how they work. As I open up down here our categories template, and on here what I've done is I've added a collection list, okay? And you can see over here on the right side, I have um, pulled from the categories CMS. And what I've done is I've just simply taken on the link, I've clicked current category. So what that says is whatever category that we are in, that's what it's gonna use. And then I've also pulled the name from categories. And that automatically creates this list. Obviously I'm able to do the styling but it automatically creates this list on the side, okay? Now the important part is over here in the right column, I've got this header, which again is pulling the text from categories, but this part is very, very important. What we've done is we, we've taken and created the listings. If you can see, these are just made out of um, a link block and a div block. Uh, we've added a title, and then we've got like a custom little link block and button. So it's pretty simple styling. But what we've done on this whole CMS section is we have set a filter that says equipment categories contains current category. Now this is absolutely necessary because you can see if we remove this filter, what it's gonna do is it's gonna put every single piece of equipment under every tab. And so again, that leaves us with no organization. And so what we need to do is we need to pull that and make sure that it is specific for each individual listing. That way when we're clicking through each one, it is going to pull the respective ones using that filter. So every time we click conveyors, it's gonna pull up equipment that is only related to the conveyors category, okay? 
Now what I want to talk about as well here is our for sale tab. Now this is something you can see down here. I've set a condition that says um, the element is visible when the equipment is for sale is on. Okay, and so what that means is if you toggle the little sold icon, what it's going to do is it is actually going to show the sold. And so let's look at an example here. So let's hop into our listings and let's go ahead and try our ebb and flow right here. Okay, and so I'm going to click off the for sale and click on the sold and we'll save that and then as we go through to our ebb and flows here you're gonna find that one specifically has popped up the sold button which allows people to see hey this piece of equipment is sold it's gonna show that as well here in the specific product page I ran in the same product page I ran the exact same filter um, so that's going to pull either for sale or sold now I want to dive into the specific product page and show you everything that I've done really briefly. Um, I've pulled just this name briefly again from the listings as well as right here. This at the top is just giving them a little bit of like a little bit better idea of the organization. But then what I've done is right here on the left, I've pulled the main background image and put it in the background of a div. Over here, I've actually used light boxes so they can click those and open them up. Now what you can do here is link with other light boxes and give this a group name and what that does is when you click on them you are actually able to filter through one by one through all of the different light box images okay now one thing that i didn't want is i didn't want on the right side here for example if we had 25 sub images i didn't want that to be a super long line of just photos right and so what i did with this is i actually selected this div box and over here you can see that I put a height of 400 pixels and then right here on the overflow I clicked scroll and so what that does is everything that goes outside of that you're just going to be able to scroll through and see all of those now as we come down again just some basic tabs I've pulled the specific details so right here I got the text from our overview section which is in our CMS if we look at our specs I've done the exact same thing pulled from our specs and then same with the video I've pulled the link. If the link isn't available, the video just doesn't show up, which is fine. Um, but that gives them the option to add this in. And then again, the last thing that, uh, that we did here is we set a similar filter within this that says equipment categories contains any equipment um, within this category or within related category. So again, if we remove this filter, what you're going to see is it would just be showing us every single piece of equipment which is just a mess right and so we want to make sure that this gives them a very custom experience so if they are specifically just looking for things that fall in the category of ebb and flow i'm going to click back here it is going to give us just specifically ebb and flow pieces of equipment okay so again, I know we've covered a lot of different things but i want to give you a brief um, kind of just example of what all you can do with this powerful CMS functionality. At the end of the day, the best way to learn how to use this CMS feature is to just practice it. You just need to be building sites, um, trying to figure out how everything works and interacts. Uh, if you need to start with smaller builds like blogs or image portfolios, um, you can even use templates to recreate what's going on um, and then just try to kind of like reverse engineer that. And by doing these things, you're going to be able to understand the structure um, and then be able to create really complex um, organizational structures that are going to make life a lot easier for your clients. Now structuring a complex CMS like this is not a typical designer skill and this is what I love about it is any other designer is going to be charging these clients every time they need to make a change or make an update and if we can just hand over this power of like their CMS editor they're able to do all those things on their own and not only is it going to save us a lot of time and hassle but it is going to allow us to charge a lot more for these websites and clients are not even going to bat an eye when we come to them with this proposal for a more expensive website because they are going to see the value in that and see that you're offering much more than just a website design so to end this i want to ask a quick question um, that you can answer in the comments but the question i had is how much do you think you should be charging for a complex cms website like this i kind of want to get the feedback um, from you individually see what you would charge or what you are charging for this type of website 
this might give us a good idea to see maybe I should be increasing my prices or maybe you should be increasing yours. Uh, but if you have any other questions, please make sure to leave them in the comments and I will catch you in the next video.